Let's talk about what it's really like to write a novel or a book for a celebrity as a ghostwriter. How does it work? How does it happen? What does it look like? What does the good, the bad, and the ugly side of ghostwriting celebrity novels and books look like? This is exactly what we're gonna be diving into in today's video all about who's really writing celebrity novels, which is an article I pulled from Vulture written by Anonymous in Publishing. So that's awfully interesting. Obviously, all of these titles and celebrities are gonna remain nameless, but let's go ahead and dive right into it. We've got a couple case studies to talk about, so let's get right into it. So the first is a reality TV star's beach read. Now, her publisher, this reality TV star's publisher, recommended this particular ghostwriter for the job, and quote, her team was just like, okay. So it doesn't seem like they're particularly engaged uh, early on, just in terms of first impression. The process goes as follows. They had an initial phone call where they kind of loosely talked about the plot, what this particular author or celebrity sort of had in mind for their book, talking about goals. And this is the part where they kind of part ways this celebrity goes off to film her show. The ghostwriter, on the other hand, churns out this fiction novel in seven weeks, which is really, really fast. If you are maybe someone who hasn't written a book before, I think writing it in a year is fast. It's very, very subjective, but that's really, really fast. So she finished this novel in seven weeks, which she said for herself was even a record. And then they had a follow-up call where they talked about some edits and revisions. In this case, they seem to be pretty minimal. And in fact, they didn't actually meet again until the photo shoot for the cover of the second book, which I guess was part of this Beach Read series or something. So as a result of writing this book, it hit the New York Times bestseller list and it remained up there for about four weeks. And this is really interesting. The ghostwriter said, quote, I had been dying to get on the bestseller list my whole career. I couldn't get there on my own, but I got there with her for the first time. I think that line is so interesting and I'm gonna tell you why. It's because she wrote a good book. Also, probably because she's a celebrity. There's a lot of celebrities and people out there with books that aren't good that continue to sell. There's examples that I could get into, but I don't want to upset anyone. But I thought there was something that was a little bit sad about that. Like she couldn't have just gotten there on her own literary merit. She had to leverage the name of her client in order to hit that accomplishment for herself. So I thought that line was really interesting. She got paid in the mid five figures for this job, which does seem, I, I guess that is appropriate. I mean, I've heard of ghostwriting payments and like if you're going to get a ghostwriter expect a like a bare minimum of ten thousand dollars and even then i feel like that's kind of on the lower end if there's anyone out there who does ghostwriting for a living please sound off in the comments i really want to hear about what your process is like you know kind of what your workflow is like i think that'd be really interesting to learn about so this particular ghostwriter got paid in the mid five figures and interestingly even though she didn't get on the new york times bestseller list out of her own merit she did say that she really didn't care so much about having her name on the cover or getting some kind of recognition in some kind of way in or on the book. But she did say that people in the industry, in the book publishing industry, knew that she was the one to write that book. And in return, she ended up getting a lot more opportunities and stuff. It's very, very networking heavy. It's very, very relationship heavy in the book space. So this did seem like it was one of the better experiences. So that is one reality TV personalities beach read. The second one we're gonna be getting into is a, a woman who helped co-write a professional dancer's novel. I have no idea who this could be. I'm not in the dance world, but this one also seems to have been a pretty good experience. The, the next two, uh, maybe not so much. So this ghostwriter got connected to the celebrity through their agent and this happened to be her first celebrity client and it seemed to kind of be that way for a lot of these people too these like case studies that we're talking about so this looked like being heavily involved in the outlining of the book and, and the developmental process of it too because it seemed like the client the celebrity had kind of like a loose general idea of what she was wanting and then it was up to the author or the ghostwriter in this case to kind of put some bones and a little bit of structure to it and then I thought that this was really smart too she actually chunked her writing in thirds. So she would write maybe the first third of a chapter or the first third of a book. I don't remember immediately what the article said. She would send it to the client for approval. If she got a yes, if she got a no, if she, you know, this looks great. Oh, this could use a little bit of work. She would gradually sort of implement her feedback into the future chunks of writing that she did. So I think that's kind of a really cool way of doing it. I don't know if that's normal for like ghost writing, but at least with working with a celebrity where, you know, you're kind of at risk at working with a really picky or finicky client, I think that's a pretty good way to do 
do it. Now, this is the stuff I am really interested in, which is sort of like the payment, right? Like how does the money work on the back end? Anything creative, I love knowing how the money works behind it because no one ever talks about it. So for this particular arrangement, they actually split the copyrights 50-50. This book sold to the publisher for $30,000 because they split it 50-50, she got $15,000. And it looks like too at the time she was pretty close to earning out, which means that you earn out the advance that your publisher gives you, in which case you would be entitled to like recurring royalties. If I miss communicate anything, please correct me. But basically what happens if you're not familiar is that if you get a big flashy book deal, right? Like one with one of the top publishers, it's very common to get an advance and that advance is sometimes indicative of how well the publisher thinks that particular book is going to sell. If it's a large advance, it has a, lot, a high potential to sell well, low advance, lower potential to sell well. So she sold it for $30,000 and having being close to earning it out, she'll now be able to be entitled to recurring royalties. I'm almost positive that's how that works. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. So anyway, they made this book. She goes on tour with the author or with the celebrity, which I think that's pretty cool. And she actually got a lot of marketing support from the celebrities media team. It doesn't, based on this article, just what I'm given, it doesn't look like she got all that much marketing support from the publisher. If Generally, if you have a bigger name, you're gonna get more support. If you're more unknown, you're not gonna get as much support, in which case you'd have to rely on your own resources and your own connections. So I think it's really cool that they got to lean on her existing media team and they ended up getting placements on shows like Good Morning America, like the Today Show. Although I will say that traditional PR methods are sort of slowly dwindling. Everyone can be a celebrity now if you have a phone, if you have a camera, if you are consistent enough on TikTok or make a quality piece of content on YouTube well enough, you can grow a following pretty easily. I feel like anyone can kind of be a celebrity these days, but either way, still a really big deal. Now, what's really cool about this is that this particular celebrity actually wanted to give her ghostwriter cover credit because, quote, uh, she didn't want people to think that she wrote this by herself. So to me, that seems like very gracious. I'm actually really curious if you think that ghostwriters should get credit in or on a book somewhere, leave your thoughts below. I would be very curious to hear your thoughts around that. It seems to be kind of like, I don't know if controversial is the right word, but a, a very interesting perspective. I think that if someone was actually writing it, because it's very difficult to write a book at all, I think that they deserve credit. That's just my completely biased opinion. This next one is a novel for the star of a teen show. Um, this person, this celebrity, already had a co-writer who was her friend, and the ghostwriter who was assigned to this account seemed to barely be acknowledged at all as a ghostwriter. And in fact, the client didn't even read the book until it was done, and when she did read it, she said that she wanted all these revisions, she wanted all these edits made, she wasn't happy with it, so they hired a book doctor to work with her on that new outline, and then when she finished that draft, the client, the celebrity, never read or approved it. So to me, that just seems like pretty scummy. This payment was a four-figure signing payment. That's really, really low. Let's say it's $9,000. $9,000 to write a celebrity book seems really low to me, especially in conditions like this where you're not even acknowledged by the client or her co-writer friend. So this person said that the celebrity only mentioned her first name in the acknowledgement section, which apparently was not what the ghostwriter's contract said. I don't know if she wanted something more substantial. I don't know if that works more on like an individual basis with like individual ghostwriters wanting a certain credit. I, I don't know, that, that might just vary depending on who these celebrities or whatever are working with, but that seems to be kind of one of the worser ones. And then finally, this A-list actor's spicy romance series was actually inspired by Channing Tatum. They were gonna make a full novel length series probably comprised of about 75 to 80,000 words per book. This didn't actually go anywhere, but there was a lot of auditioning that needed to happen. So a lot of romance authors were auditioning to write this like novel series for Magic Mike's romance book type thing. And for each audition that, that they did, they would pay that ghostwriter auditioning $200, which would come out of the advance if they got that project. Like I said, they didn't end up doing the project at all. And to be honest, it sounds a little bit, like it lands a little bit funny for me. Like it makes sense to create a book series that's like a spinoff of Channing Tatum, right? It's like 
Channing Tatum in Fifty Shades of Grey, right? Like it sounds really great, but you hear about book to movie adaptations, but you don't always hear about movie to book adaptations. So I'm not really sure how that would work, but the idea is definitely interesting. So anyway, these were going to be full length novel series and the payment was going to be between 10 to $15,000 per book, which seems a little bit low for an A-list celebrity wanting to do a series based off of a very popular series of movies, very spicy movies, I might add too. So I don't know, like a lot of these payments just seem really low. I mean, it's not like these people are strapped for cash or anything. I mean, like they've got all the connections, media teams, like they've got a lot. So I'm struggling to understand why why these people are getting paid so little. I don't know if it's something that, that their agent negotiates or what, but these are some final takeaways, some final thoughts that I have to share based on all this. The first one is no surprise. The book business, the publishing industry is very, very relationship heavy. It's like moving to a small town where everyone kind of knows each other, right? Like referrals are like a very big thing in any kind of business really, but because the book space is so niche, Everyone just kind of sort of has a beat on other people, right? It's sort of like neighborhoods in the same town, if you will. So it seems to be very networking heavy. And there's a quote that I'm pulling that says, I've had friends, and this is from a ghostwriter. I've had friends who know someone who introduced me to the someone who then says, I want to write a book. Which of your authors is going to write it? The second takeaway that I have is one that I kind of already mentioned, which is that there seems to be some awfully low payment structures around here. It's either commission based. It's either it's in the four figures, like one author that we talked about. But it looks like typically a flat fee will range from about $10,000 upward, which I'm not really surprised about. Like if you have like a lower end client, but if you're working with these celebrities and you're wanting to like make a lot of sales and get a lot of bang for your buck and hit all these bestseller lists, I feel like you would charge like minimum of like 50K or something. And there's also an expectation to audition with samples of your writing, which to me seems a little bit condescending. I, I don't know. There's, there's something about that, at least on the surface, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Maybe that's normal. I really don't know. And then finally, this was a quote that was at the very end of that article that implied that really this whole thing is just a cash grab for a celebrity, which to me isn't really a huge surprise. Living in such a digital age where everyone and anyone can be a celebrity, it's all about branding. It's all about optics, right? It's not really much of a surprise, but this is what that quote said. Actually, there's two. The first one is that it's all about diversifying your investments, having your personal brand and another income source because you've got the royalties and then the film deals, which makes a lot of sense. And then finally, the second quote says, it's really, really not about the literary merit. It comes down to money, which I feel like right now, I'm at the risk of going on a tangent. I feel like that kind of describes the book space as a whole. It just doesn't seem like there's any new fresh ideas. If you think about it, books and movies, everything's a remake, everything's a prequel, everything's a sequel. We're just kind of building off of what's already worked and frankly. I'm bored. A lot of other people I know are bored too. So that's all I really have for this video. I just thought it would be something that's kind of interesting to talk about. I find this world of like celebrity ghostwriter book type relationship stuff all rolled into the book space. I find that so interesting. I love talking about the money behind it. So I hope you got something out of it too. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing by doing that. You're letting other people know that this channel is definitely worth their attention and you recommend it. So I hope to see you in the next video soon. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take care until then. Bye.